Praveen, thank you so much for coming this morning and for being part of the 20 Minute Talk Show. It's an honor to have you here today. I understand that you work with Allergist Group and have for many years. Would you mind explaining a little bit about your background with us today? See, I'm basically a charter accountant and um, more than being a charter accountant, I'm uh, a son of two fa uh, freedom fighters. Uh, my family comes from a family of freedom fighters. I've been part of the political battle of India. Uh, have seen uh, worked with Gandhiji. Uh, so I have a lot of influence in terms of uh, working at the grassroots because my parents used to live in villages. And um, a lot of my, my uh, beliefs and values have come from my family. And I've been working for the last 25 years in different companies. But somewhere that beliefs and core values have stayed with me. Speaking of core values, um, what are some of your top core values in business? My core values of the business in, in terms of is, I think, uh, I mean, let me put it like this. I think we all have core values, but I've started living to it much more in the last seven, eight years. Uh, we always had the core values of customer centric, take care of people, uh, create more value to the customer. So these are the values which I think pretty much every company has. But my last seven years journey has been a lot more significant, impactful from a personal perspective. Okay. So when you joined um, Allergist Group, it was 12 years. Am I correct? 12 years ago? Okay, very good. Being one of the first employees for the company, was it difficult for you to implement and build um, from that? I'd, I'd like to, I'm curious as to what your journey has been in doing that. So I think I had to find the answers. So I understood the core beliefs of the company, but how does it work in India? See, in India, I think uh, there's lots of myths and beliefs about uh, what is right and what is wrong. I think every company talks about people as uh, number one, but the way it manifests is very different. And that's what's something that I started slowly understanding. And uh, in the midst of everything, I think uh, I accidentally uh, met one of my old colleagues from Oracle. And I didn't know that he had a son who was autistic. And he just said, uh, why don't you hire him? And um, I didn't have any plan as such. I just thought, OK, I, I mean, he's an old colleague. He never told me about the struggles that he went through in bringing up an autistic uh, kid. And that was, I think, in 2008 and nine, just three, four years after working in the company. I was just doing like a conventional uh, uh, leader who was building the business, hiring a lot of people, putting systems, processes, opening different offices. But this was a, a significant moment in my life when uh, we hired that person. And I didn't really understand. I just did it uh, honestly, without any plan, any thought. I just did it as a favor. And that's when my real journey started. And I started understanding something beyond what I knew about. Although I just said I come from a very strong uh, ideology of uh, Gandhism and other things. But that is when I started making sense more. When I saw this guy who is an autistic kid walking into our office, didn't know how to handle him. He was a little strange in, to start with. We didn't know how to react, respond to him. And, um, and I just started understanding him. I think uh, my journey uh, uh, of being more, uh, I would say, having more empathy, being more inclusive, uh, real understanding uh, life, I think I, I really started, in my opinion. Wow. And so with the idea of empathy and this person who um, has autism that had an impact on you and impacted your values in terms of how you built your path from there mm -hmm. and to increase your empathy in your work. Wow. So in your 12 years, in your 12 year tenure, what is the best part of working with this group? So I just said, I'll tell you the first accident and incident that happened. So this guy who was autistic walked into our office and went into, went into a girl's bathroom, ladies' bathroom, restroom. And, um, and then I got complaints about uh, this guy walking into ladies' bathroom and um, you know what happens. Uh, and the first response was, let's fire him. Uh, okay, we cannot manage this. And then I truly understood that he did it with innocence. I think it is for us to include him, for us to understand the drivers of why he did it. And I had to start including people of different thought, different perspective, maybe different ability. And that incident actually changed me f uh, from that day as to what inclusion is. Inclusion is not about just hiring people of different race, different ability, but I think including them into your life. That means you need to change first before they, you expect others to change. 
and from that the journey really started that by having people of different abilities and it could be anything but we started saying okay let's look at people with real different ability visually impaired autism although i think there is a shade of inclusiveness when you work with people from different backgrounds and uh, different uh, values but we started with this visually impaired people people with autism and then really understood what does it mean because you have to look at their ability and not their disability so a guy who is visually impaired you have to look at the ability to concentrate more ability to focus more then look at that he or she can't see and that's the small journey that i think we started uh, way back in 2008 2009 so i'd like to go back to the the incident with the um, gentleman in the going into the ladies restroom um, can you tell me what the solution was how did you solve the issue yeah so the first i just said my immediate re response was that we may have to fire him we're not ready as a company to hire people from different ability so that was the first response the hr manager came and we spoke and we almost came to a conclusion but i don't know what happened in mind i said okay let's see it from a different point of view did he do it because he wanted to go into a, a ladies restroom or did he do it to due to innocence and then we started understanding that it was innocence because he had done different things he pulls people's hair girls hairs uh, from the back uh, so i think the way i solved was the people who complained i shared this story in front of them I said, this is the reason why he did it. What do you guys think about it? So I let them to decide. And I said, observe this guy for another one day. See why and how he does things. He's strange. He makes noises. He flaps his hands. He's socially awkward. Sometimes when you wish, he doesn't see. So why do you think this all happens? And when I let the people who complain and uh, make them observe this guy, I think they themselves came to this conclusion that he did it out of innocence. It's for us to make sure that he understands that's not the place to go. We make him understand that this is something to be done and not done. And they listen to it. And I think after that, he's one of the most popular guys. And today, I think I'm very proud of the fact that he left us and joined Ford because he wanted to go back to Chennai. And he's got a job where he earns really respectable amount. So, and we all miss him. So that's a level of impact that he created. And... Uh, the kind of legacy he left for us. Nice. So all the people who had complained realized in observing, just in observing yeah. where his infl uh, what his behavior was caused by. Because he was strange. And for somebody who has never seen an autistic kid, they feel he's mad. And they're not really mad because he, was a, he had done MCOM. He was someone who could remember any time your date of birth, if you said your date of birth, you could tell the day you were born. It never goes wrong. So we started seeing different abilities. And actually they started giving work which was matching his abilities. He had some phenomenal memory. He could tell you if you ask him which bus goes to which place. He can say when the bus starts, when the bus will end. If you go and tell him, uh, go to the railway station and say and uh, which platform, which train leaves. He can tell you without even looking at the timetable. So as people started understanding him, his abilities, this made the same conclusion that he did it out of innocence. And that is what, you have to listen to somebody's point of view, you have to see the other's ability, and things actually become much easier to understand. Right, right. The understanding that they experienced, you know, what his needs were. The understanding is important to share with everybody. Yeah, absolutely. So, do you see your company becoming more inclusive now? I think it's a journey. I don't think uh, it, um, it's something that you can say ever that um, uh, I don't know, understand the impact. But it's a journey. The first thing I had to change a lot as a person because there was always fear of working with people of different abilities, visually impaired. You, you create some image of yourself. You're scared a little time sometimes. But I think the first uh, change had to happen in me. I had to influence people and say, okay, why did you try having, hiring somebody with different ability? And I just said we wanted people with a little more symbolic, which is visually impaired. And as we started hiring, I saw a lot of change in the managers. Because when you start having people of different ability, even a simple presentation, how do you do a presentation to a person who doesn't see? I think you start thinking more. Right. You start uh, imagining things better. And I think as they started doing, I think their abilities, their impact started, I think, changing. And it's a journey. I think um, we have around 40 people right now. I think almost every business group has somebody of different ability. Really? And we feel that having people of this kind 
actually makes us a better human beings, a better person, and we are in a better position to serve our customers because we see somebody else's point of view. We are not stuck with our own point of view. We are a little more open towards listening to someone, listening to our customers, listening what and why they do what they do. And I think that has been some of the changes that I started slowly seeing as we started bringing more and more people into uh, of different ability. And it's not just with different ability people. I think as a company, I think one of the things that leaders struggle is to get better performance from people. And a lot of times you want to fire them, you want to shout at them, you want to scream because you get it. And I think what has changed personally for me is that I see a lot of people with a lot more empathy. Earlier I could lose temper and I've been working in companies like Oracle and CA where you fire them. If you don't perform, the only remedy is fire them. And you can get a lot of people and there is a general tendency that there are lots of people available. You can hire them at any cost. But as I started working and as I started understanding what is empathy, I started seeing people from a different point of view. I started understanding why they can't perform uh, at the standard at which I would want to do. And I just started doing my relationship with people improved. My impact in people has improved. You have to be a little patient. But just listening and having more empathy and understanding why and what they do, I think has been a major significant impact on me as a person. And as I started changing, and I just started having, uh, I think, conviction because you have to have conviction before you tell someone. If you haven't gone through the journey yourself, how can I tell someone? So my journey was more important to start with and I just started having a little more uh, impact on myself. I could go and have the moral strength to tell someone. And that's how I'm trying to spread the message in my company. I don't think I've reached anywhere. There's still so much to cross, but I enjoy this now. I enjoy working with people, even if they don't do well and try to understand different point of views. That's great. I, it's great when you consider um, including those people with disabilities or different abilities in various work activities. My next question is, is here in India, I would say we have a, a, approximately 70 people who are, have a disability or differently able are not working. How do you see if people are, um, if companies are willing to hire? Do you think it's the skills? Do you think it's the lack of support? What do you think motivates or doesn't motivate companies um, to hire? So what's your perspective on that? I mean, I, I understand that you're an employment agency, you do placements. Like if I was to come to you as a person with a disability and I say, you know, I need work, I need a job. Um, would you assess which company I would fit in or where I would fit in here in India? What would your approach be? So actually first from a landscape, I think a lot of Indian companies are still not uh, open to hiring people of different ability. I think they don't understand. They feel they have to go through a huge amount of change. They'll have liabilities. They have to change their workplace to be designed towards people of different ability. So there are lots of myths. Uh, people haven't even attempted to do it. So at a at a macro level, I feel there is still a lot of lot of work for people first to get open to about it. Okay, now how are we doing about? It? First, we wanted to be the role models. I can't go and tell someone to hire if I haven't done myself. So, as a company, I just said we are really encouraging to hire people of different ability in different groups, not just in employment. We have a company which does mechanical engineering services. We have people without hands who are doing drawings through their legs. So it's not just in employment, it is in different aspects of our business that we're hiring different ability to showcase that this is possible. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, I think we have partnered with Enable to ensure that we provide employment. It's a CSR activity, we don't do it for profit. And I still see a lot of obstacles, people are not open and it has to start from the top. It cannot be something that can be start from the grassroots. So the CEOs, the people who have the ability to influence, the people who have power, use the power with the responsibility. So you have to really impact from the top, make them understand that it's not just about hiring a person of different ability, it's the impact that the person can create in your company. The empathy can make your managers more empathetic towards their people, can make your managers more innovative, more skillful. I think that's a message and I try to do that, but I think a lot of work needs to be done. There is a lot of myth, a lot of fear in my opinion of hiring people of different ability and people are not just open. They're looking at the ability of a person, which means they have to have qualification, they have to have one or two skills. But I think as you see the other things, 
which is the emotional part, the impact that they can create in managers and the workplace is much more than just bringing their skills onto the table. Just having some people and going out with them creates a different environment. I've seen a lot of my guys going for teamwork dinners and today they're very conscious about the people who have different abilities. Is this place safe for people who can't see? If a person can't see, how will he or she enjoy? Just having that level of empathy, I think they're making them as better human beings. So you, you had spoken a little bit about your family um, being freedom fighters. Can you please elaborate or share a story about their involvement and what they contributed? So I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I was born in a village. My father and my mother were freedom fighters. My father wanted to start a small school in a village uh, to uh, educate g girls because he felt that girls were not educated. And I'm talking in 60s, 70s. Okay, so that was the decision he took. And as he took the decision, he felt that village is not the right place for me to live. For, I mean, we had, I have two uh, brothers. And I was given for adoption by, to my mother's sister, who was a member of parliament in Delhi. Okay. okay. And she was one of the first um, MPs from Andhra, who was a woman uh, person. Okay, so wow. that so I moved from a small village uh, to a town in uh, in uh, Delhi, and lived with my aunt, who I call her mother. And the biggest impact is as a family, uh, my father married into my mother, who is again a Gandhian, but from a different caste. And I'm talking 1957-58. Uh, I was not born at that time, but uh, but at 58-57, marrying outside the family. Uh, and marrying in a Gandhian way uh, under the blessing of Vinoba Bhave, that Varda, uh, they married in Varda. Uh, and those stories have lived with me. So first I moved to Delhi and uh, I lived with my aunt. And my aunt again was a Gandhian, a member of parliament uh, in Delhi, living in the most affluent areas in Delhi, moving to my village on a holidays, seeing a different part of the uh, country. So I had the privilege when I was growing to see one high level of affluence, power. You know, Delhi is all about power. You live in the best part of the city, in the, which has got all these bungalows and all these huge houses. And at the same time, I'm going in my, to my village on the uh, holidays and seeing a very different world. And these two worlds had made a great impact. And just the fact that I could live in a family where I had two mothers, two fathers, a lot of brothers, Half Brothers uh, has been one of the, my biggest significant impact of who I am and how I've been influenced in my life. So that's where you developed the value of empathy. Because you, as you mentioned, you know, your aunt was the, uh, one of the first MPs. For you, you were exposed to considering diversity from the get-go. And well, that led to your development, right? Yeah. So some core was there, but I just said in the last seven years, I could take that core and start practicing in a much more way. So you're aware of it. I could see diversity because my, both my mothers were very strong women. They had their own identity uh, and my parents respected it. My fathers respected it. Normally the power game is where the men are a little more powerful than the women. But in my family, it was the other way in terms of their impact. Like my father was an economist, but my mother was a member of parliament. My mother was running a school in the village. She was actually in a way a breadwinner while my father was more Gandhian. He didn't believe in uh, working for someone. He believed in message. So he didn't have much wealth. While my mother being a teacher, being a school, ma a school teacher, she was earning little. When I come to Delhi, it was my mother who was a member of parliament, had most significant impact. My father was a government servant. And the power balance and the respect that I developed for women was something that I think uh, was, I think, the experiences that I went through at that time. Wow. Your mother's being very powerful. That's quite a powerful statement. If you had a magic stick, okay, what three things would you change in this world with your magic stick? One is definitely including others, okay? Today as a country, as a world, I think we are becoming so nationalist. So the first thing is ability to understand the other point of view. I would feel that's the first thing. Secondly, getting the best out of human beings. I think as a working company, so much of potential is in human beings. 
that I'm in a service industry, so I create all the value through people. So if there's any way that we can make them enjoy what they do, create some purpose, that would be my uh, second objective. Third is uh, taking care of our na natural resources. I'm very, very worried about how we are taking care of our natural resources, water, sea, climate. So these three things, if we can create a society, which I think Gandhi has said that use the resources not to your um, uh, greed, but to your need. So if these three things can happen in this world, I'll be very, very happy. Amazing, I love it, especially the third one with the natural resources. Not about greed, but for need, beautiful. Give me one final closing statement, sir. Just a one sentence statement. Empathy is the best uh, indicator for business. If you want to buy a business, look at the empathy of the company and you'll not go wrong. Great. What a great sentence to close on. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed the, the conversation. Thank you so much. Sir.